Hi, welcome back to the Progressive Primitivist, where we believe the only way to go forward in religion is to go back to the Bible. Today, we have a very different episode of the Open Forum. As you know, we've been doing a series of the Free to Hardman Open Forum uh, from 1967 and onward. And today, we have a different episode. Would you like to kind of tell me about it, Dad? Sure. This episode really is a gem. Uh, it's a well-known fact that for years, Gus Nichols and Guy Woods on the Open Forum would uh, discuss back and forth the nature of the Holy Spirit's indwelling. Of course, Guy Woods believed that the Holy Spirit only indwells a Christian representatively through the Word of God, and Gus Nichols believed in a personal indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But today what we're going to see is a discussion, maybe it might be better termed a debate, between Thomas Warren and Guy Woods. You see, Thomas Warren not only believed in the personal indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but he believed that the Holy Spirit, in his role as the indweller of Christians, directly impacted and strengthened a Christian's heart. And so we think that you'll be really benefited by listening to this debate between Tom Warren and Guy Woods. Absolutely, and, and to, to kind of uh, emphasize what he believed, we have a really special clip from uh, the Mac Deaver Jerry Moffat debate, where Mac Deaver actually shares a personal letter between uh, Thomas Warren and a congregation where uh, Thomas Warren actually uh, commends the view of Roy C. Deaver and Mac Deaver. Uh, and so here's the clip of that just to give this some context. I want you to show chart 256A, Todd, if you will. I understand that Brother Elkins was trying to shore up the other side a while ago. Before, before lunch, we had a meeting with Brother Elkins and Brother Taylor and Curtis Cates a few weeks ago in Memphis, Tennessee. And they're my friends. We've been friends for years and years. And I told Brother Elkins at that time, and I'd told him before, really, in letters, I think. But at any rate, I told him to his face, you don't understand Brother Warren's position. And I don't appreciate Brother Elkins or Brother Cates continuing to put out material that suggests that Brother Warren somehow is standing with them somehow, and he's, he disagrees with the Deavers, and he tries to scare people like that. Brother Warren encouraged me in my last two debates. We talked on the telephone. He's worked with my father for years and years. We have some of the last words written down that are from Brother Warren. I am glad that we talked. This is in a letter to one of the elders of the Birdville congregation. We're using this with permission. I am glad that we talked briefly about the Holy Spirit. I know that you, like I and both of the Deavers, only want the truth on the matter. I ask Mac to send you some of his material that might be helpful. The Deavers don't hold that there is anything mysterious about the Holy Spirit. They hold the true Bible position as I feel that you do and that I also do. Next chart, Todd. Brother David, since my health will not permit me to get out on the forefront and help Mac fight the errors and accusations that have been lodged against him. It is my sincere prayer that you will study the material that Mac will be sending you. That's a letter to David Smith, uh, January 13, 1999. Now, I'm, I get tired of that. I get tired of people sending out mail and writing letters and standing up and acting like uh, they know what they're doing when they don't. And I say that kindly, Brother Elkins. We've been friends a long time. I used to have a great amount of confidence in him. Robert Taylor asked me the other day if I still had, and I said, well, I have some. <laughs> I don't know how much he has in me, probably none. But I don't like people not understanding something and then feeling free to go ahead and criticize it. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. Well, that's an interesting clip, but now let's hear Thomas Warren in his own words present his view concerning the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and then the debate that he has with Guy Woods. Hope you enjoy. Now, Brother Gus Nichols told me that he appreciated deeply the speech that I made last evening. And so far as I'm aware, there's no difference between what he teaches and what I teach. His Brother Woodson, I'm told, emphasized that this morning. So Brother Woods deal, or is in harmony with his belief in this matter, then we're in harmony. And I believed exactly what I believe now when I was moderating for him in various debates and helping in other ways. If this is a liberal teaching now, why wasn't it liberal then? I preached exactly what I preached then and now. But 
I want you to note the following propositions which are logically entailed in this view that the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God only through the Word. First, one receives the Holy Spirit by receiving the Word of God. If that's not the truth, I'd like to hear Brother Woods deny that it's so. If one does not receive the Holy Spirit by receiving the Word of God, let him explain how we receive it. The only way one receives the Holy Spirit is by receiving the Word of God. If that's not true, let him explain. One receives the Holy Spirit when he receives the Word of God. If that's not true, let him make it clear. I certainly would not for a moment ever seek to say that anyone's teaching anything they're not. So I was simply dealing with these matters last evening in a very general way, what I felt was a problem arising in the church. And that the only way the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God is through the Word of God. A dilemma is faced by anyone who espouses this doctrine. You know, brethren, I may not know many things, I don't make claim to be wise, but I have studied logic. It is a matter of my everyday world. It is assumed that you know the basic principles of logic. Either of these things must be followed, it seems to me. One must choose one course or the other to follow this uh, doctrine. Either this one first, since one receives the Holy Spirit, when he receives the Word of God, and since one receives the Word of God before he is baptized, and since one receives the Holy Spirit because he is already a son of God, Galatians 4, 6, it would be logically implied, it would be logically necessary, following this line of reasoning, that one becomes a child of God before he is baptized. Now I know that you do not believe that. But it is logically entailed with the doctrine, just as we had to show the brethren who opposed orphan homes and herald truth that many things that they had not yet realized were entailed in their doctrine, and it took some time to help them to see it. On the other hand, here's the other horn of the dilemma. Since one receives the Holy Spirit when, when he receives the Word of God, and since one receives the Word of God before he is baptized, Acts 2.41, and if there's some difference in receiving the Word there and receiving it after you become a Christian, I'd like for that to be explained in detail. And since one receives the word before he is baptized, and since one remains a child of the devil until he is baptized into Christ, it follows that it is possible for a child of the devil to receive the Holy Spirit today. I, I'm sure you don't believe that. You don't believe the logical conclusion to it, but it is logically entailed in the doctrine. Thus it would follow that there is no special sense in which the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God, and incidentally, Dr. Brent makes that very point, that if this doctrine is true, then there is no special sense in which the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God, so far as I recall reading. When the Bible teaches that children of God are sealed with the Holy Spirit, this simply means that they are sealed with the Word of God as the instrument of the Spirit. And when the Bible teaches that children of God receive the Holy Spirit as an earnest of their inheritance, it does not mean they receive the Holy Spirit, but they receive the Word of God, which is the instrument of the Holy Spirit. And this means, in the light of Acts 2.41, that those who receive the word before they are baptized are sealed with the Holy Spirit and receive the earnest of the inheritance. And I don't believe the Bible teaches that at all. As I emphasized last evening, there is a phraseology which has crept into the minds of brethren or in their usage, which leads to confusion. And that is that the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God independent of or separate and apart from the Word. Now, I don't know who teaches that. Likely there are some who do. I certainly do not. As I stated last evening, Brother Woods uh, used the word conjointly. My phraseology was, the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God in conjunction with the Word of God. It is a conjunctive situation, not one of disjunction. I believe the Holy Spirit plainly teaches or the Bible plainly teaches that the Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God in conjunction with the Word of God. Now, in Acts 2.41, as Brother Woods made this point, if I got him correctly a moment ago, he said that since uh, the point has been made that the Holy Spirit dwells in conjunction with the Word of God, that therefore the same problem would be faced relative to Acts 2.41, that they who received the Word were baptized and therefore 
according to my view, you would receive the Holy Spirit before you baptized, but not so at all. This hinges upon the very vital point that God gives the Holy Spirit to a Christian in a very special way. The man in the world, before he's baptized, received the Word, which is the instrument of the Spirit. What Paul said in Galatians 4, 6, because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit. As I gave you the logical argument last night, these two cannot be the same. You receive the Word of God in order to become a son of God. You receive the Spirit because you are a son of God. Now those two cannot be the same. They simply cannot be the same. Now, brethren, you cannot laugh that away. If it's dealt with, it's going to have to be dealt with upon a logical basis. The point is sometimes made that the Holy Spirit does nothing. The Word of God doesn't do. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a gift. This is not a gift the Holy Spirit gives us. It is the Holy Spirit himself. This is made clear not only in Acts 2.38, but Acts 5.32. Galatians 4, 6. This Holy Spirit then seals us as children of God. The word seal there means something which marks as genuine. A child of the devil can receive the word of God. But he is not marked as a child of God. He does not receive the Holy Spirit, though he receives the instrument of the Spirit. Brethren, surely you can see that point. That when we become children of God, when we're baptized into Christ, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and this seals us or marks us, much as a college might put a seal on a diploma. This marks it as a genuine diploma, not a pseudo one that someone might slip into the administration building at night and steal. If any man hath not the Spirit of God, he is none of his, Romans chapter 8. This fits right in with this context here and makes it clear that unless we're sealed by the Holy Spirit... This is not sealed by the Word. We receive the Word before we're baptized. Then further we learn that the Holy Spirit is given to children of God as an earnest of their e eternal inheritance. Now that means that we are given the Holy Spirit as a pledge that we will receive the rest, which is eternal life in heaven. This is not given to the child of the devil who is out in the world, though he's on his way to becoming a child of God, remains a child of the devil until he's baptized out of the world into Christ. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is given to strengthen the spirit of the inward man. Paul prayed for that. I told some brethren recently that I wasn't going to get too excited about this until they stop practicing what I preach. As I emphasized last evening, when men go into hospitals where terminal cancer cases are, they pray for those people to be strengthened by his spirit in the inward man. I'm certain that you do. And I believe the Bible authorizes us to tell a man who says, I'm weak. I know what the Bible tells me to do. I can see here's the path down which I should walk, but I need some help from God. And Paul prayed for the Ephesian brethren that they might have that help. And the help he talked about was to be strengthened by his spirit in the inward man. And that was in conjunction with the word of God. And if that be heresy, brethren, make the most of it. The Holy Spirit dwells in the body of the child of God. Paul reasons in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, Your body, your physical body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you. And then he then contemplates the possibility of a man taking his body and joining it to a harlot. He pictures this as a crime so heinous as to be almost unthinkable. Shall you take that body, that temple, in which the Holy Spirit himself dwells, when he says, which is in you? Now this is true of a man. A man in the world can receive the word of God. But you are not a child of God until you are baptized into Christ. Let me note this in closing. We receive the word before we're baptized. Acts 2.41. We receive the Spirit after we're baptized. Acts 2.38, Galatians 4.6. We receive the Word in order to become sons of God. Acts 2.42. We are sons of God, or we receive the Holy Spirit because we are sons of God. Brethren, that has been taught by faithful brethren since the Lord's Church was restored in this land of ours. It is taught by the great majority, I have no doubt, of faithful brethren today. I pray.
plead with you that you be willing to examine the evidence that we all remain brethren and work together. So far as I'm concerned, I have just as much love for Brother Wood and those who stand for him as I ever did, and it is beyond my ability to describe. It is my earnest prayer with all of my heart that we shall work with one another. And this was the basic plea that I was making, and not against one another. Let us deal with issues that arise among us. But let us learn that the great task before us is to carry the gospel to the world. And we are hardly touching the hem of the garment. If you don't believe that so, then I plead with you to examine what's going on in the world. Thank you, Brother Wood. Unfortunately, Brother Warren feels that these remarks, whether with reference to higher education or with reference to the Holy Spirit, are directed at him. Now, I know not why he draws that conclusion, unless he feels that he has to defend the position every time it's attacked. Now, Brother Warren is not the only one in the country that holds these views. And so far as he is concerned, he has a perfect right, number one, to believe what he wants to regard. And I have not the least desire, in any fashion, whatever, to in any way to disturb him or embarrass him. I had not mentioned his name. Much of what I said today had no relation whatever to him. I felt that he took a full hour last night to justify his position, but not satisfied. He wants a further effort today. Now, as for the 25 minutes, I was quite a part of the discussion over yonder today, but I didn't get up there because I thought, well, I'll take care of it this afternoon, but I had a speech of last night to, uh, to refer to, at least indirectly, and also the matters discussed over there, so I took the time to set out the issue. Now, I would like to say once for all, we're not opposed to uh, higher education. If Brother Warren wants to get a doctor's degree, that's his business, and I don't consider that anybody has any right to even criticize him for it. Amen. But now, I tell you what I don't appreciate now that the subject is up, the insinuation that all gospel preachers without such are ignorant characters unable to meet the issues of the day. Amen. Amen. Now these brethren, these brethren will serve their cause better if they quit making that insinuation. Well, may I say further that repeatedly we were assured that somebody needs to prepare themselves to meet the issues of the day. Well, apparently we have nobody that can meet the issues of the day. Well, now we've got a lot of men with doctor's degrees, Norval Young, Batsell Baxter. They're by the dozens around over the country. Have these fellows been failing all these years? So now, Brother Juan, we are not, uh, if anybody has said something about this that upsets you, uh, certainly it's not my intention to, and I apologize if I said one word that reflected upon your effort to get an education. May the Lord bless you, and, and I certainly have no criticism to offer, uh, because I, I don't think that anybody will ever shake the faith of Tom Warren regarding the inspiration of the Bible, and so on. Amen. And because I don't believe there's a better man on earth than Tom Warren. But I think he's unduly exercised about this man, and he's too sensitive about it. And I wouldn't have mentioned this if he hadn't himself injected it, because we all love it. We're not mad at you, Brother Tom. And I would be glad if he would just simply, uh, as far as possible, be able to harm if his views are the same as Brother Nichols. Brother Nichols' views are the same as mine, so that makes us the same. <laughs> I would just like to I, I would just like to ask a question or two. Brother Juan, what is it that the Holy Spirit does to you that the word came? Would you come up here and tell us? Brother Woods, I've explained that last evening and today I've explained that the Holy Spirit is given as a seal to the child of God. This is not the Word of God, it's the Holy Spirit Himself. The Holy Spirit is given as the earnest of our inheritance. This is not the Word of God, both of these Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Paul prayed that the brethren might be strengthened by his Spirit in the inward man. And as I've indicated in 1 Corinthians 6, 
the Holy Spirit is given as a deterrent to sin in addition to the Word of God, in conjunction with the Word of God. The Holy Spirit which is in you, the very use of the fact that he refers to the body of the Christian, that it is a temple of the Holy Spirit, indicates that we are to contemplate our bodies, the dwelling place of the Spirit, as a strong deterrent to sin, and he contemplates the particular sin, the fornication. Now there are four things that the Holy Spirit does, not separate and apart or independent of the Word, but in conjunction with the Word. Well, that's not what I ask you. I ask you, what does it do that the Word doesn't? You're telling me that it does that with the Word. I didn't say it did anything without the Word. Well, I... If there's anything, if there's anything that I emphasize, Brother Woods, it is that it does nothing not in conjunction with the Word. I emphasize that by saying over and over it is not disjunction, which would mean independence, well, but conjunction. Can I means... say then that the Holy Spirit operates insofar as the Christian is concerned only by means of the Word? I believe the Holy Spirit himself dwells in our body. That is not the question. Answer the question, can or does the Holy Spirit do anything apart from the word of truth to us? Well, I'd rather answer the question the way in my own language. The Holy Spirit dwells in the child of God and in conjunction with the word of God. It is the Holy Spirit himself, not only the word of God. Now, Brother Woods, I'll be as good to you as you were to me. Do we receive the Holy Spirit when we receive the Word of God? Now, are you going to First of all, I have already answered that. I, what did you say? I pointed, I pointed out, number one, that when a person obeys the gospel, of course the Word enters into his heart and governs his life. But may I point out to you that that is because, as Brother Lipscomb said, it permeates his life. Now, it's very true. You put leaven, take a little leaven and put it in the meal. There's a time when it's just the leaven by itself and the meal is separated. That would represent the fact that the word is preached and perhaps is received. But then as it influences the life, controls the life, as Brother Lipscomb so ably pointed out, then, of course, he is filled with the Spirit. As Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. But I want to answer those four points now. Well, time is, just a minute, Brother Wood. You didn't answer the question that I asked. I asked, do you receive the Holy Spirit when you receive the word of God? Now, we receive the word of God before we're baptized. Now, do, does a man who receives the word of God before he's baptized, does he receive the Holy Spirit when he receives it? I just explained it to you, Brother Warren. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Brother Warren is wanting me to do, to put in his words, what he was unwilling to do in mine. But let me answer your full point. Let me answer your full point. Number one, he says that the Holy Spirit is given us as a seed. I remember at least 35 years ago in discussing that with Brother Joe S. Wally, who had heard Baptist preachers make that argument in debate. He said the seal there is a stamp. That is, it is a mark of approval upon the individual. The stamp of approval of the Holy Spirit is upon the Christian. And it's that kind of a seal. Secondly, with reference to the earnest, the word earnest just means a part payment. Now, does he mean that the Holy Spirit is the part payment? If so, that means we'll all get the baptism of the Spirit over yonder. Because an earnest must be paid in exactly the same thing. It has no reference there to the Spirit as such. The earnest there is a down payment on salvation in heaven. That's what it means. He's mistaking the meaning of the passage completely. And thirdly, with reference to our bodies being a temple of the Spirit, nobody questions that at all. That's not the issue. The issue is how. But our time is five minutes over. Surely, Brother Warren, you've had ample opportunity to state your position. Are you satisfied? Well, I'm satisfied with mine. I'm not too satisfied. <laughs> Again, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, if you like our content, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you leave a thumbs up on our video and you comment uh, what you thought in the comment section. But also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can see uh, our content and whenever we post content. And make sure you follow us on our social medias in the description below. Uh, thank you again. See you next time.